Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I want to start my presentation with a picture of our planet Earth and a question. Why? Um, you could say it's because this is how you're supposed to start a perfect TED Talk, according to a TED Talk on how to prepare a perfect TED Talk. Um, but there's also another reason, right? This picture creates perspective, right? Every astronaut who has been in space and looked back at the planet has said that it changed their perspective forever. As disagreements that we have between humans, right, appear to become so insignificant. And it becomes clear that we as a species have a collective purpose, which is to protect this beautiful blue marble and leave it behind in a better stage that um, when we found it at and for the next generation. But though we know this is true, right, but yet we do this. So how can we conduct individual actions that so obviously run counter to our collective purpose, right? I think there's a very simple answer, this equation. We, the, the, the value we inherently place on, on, on things is not equal to its price, right? Let's, let's just look at this example, right? This is a picture of a mangrove forest, right? We know that it acts as an important buffer for tropical typhoons. It's a nursery for small fish, so it's important to support livelihoods. It stores four times more carbon than dry forests. It, in short, it, it exemplifies a ton of long-term value for both for local communities and for the planet. But yet, we do this. Because a few people can make a short-term profit selling wood, mangrove wood, as charcoal, or shrimp farms for that matter, um, uh, uh, you know, replace it with shrimp pumps with very limited value to the rest of the community and, and negative value for the planet. But charcoal happens to have a price that is basically that can be turned into money, right? And this is why this happened. So how about, how about we're changing the game? What would happen if we could turn into money the value that we as society place on a mangrove forest, for example. I'm not sure if you know, but global carbon markets did exactly that for a while. We put a price on avoided carbon emissions, and we allowed companies to own the rights to such carbon credits. And these carbon credits started to show up in the balance sheets of large greenhouse gas emitting entities around the world and changed the way decisions were made. Because now, the value that we, pl that we placed on our collective purpose had a price. Right? This has worked quite well. <clears throat> carbon markets have moved billions of dollars into the low carbon economies of developing countries. Many sustainability-driven organizations and many big brands have become carbon neutral. Now this is this is a business that my company, South Pole Group, has been conducting for the last 10 years around the world. I have been here, actually in Thailand, from the start. I um, actually want to use this opportunity to basically uh, call your attention to a book on sustainable development uh, in Thailand, which happened to be a, a, a co-editor. Right, which I think is a very good source book for everyone interested in a deeper understanding on, on the topic. Right? Um, it's currently being also revised because after it was published, we realized immediately that there are so many other stories out there that we have not yet captured. But we have not we have not done enough, you know. Like so, carbon markets was a start. You know perhaps that following the expiration of the Kyoto Agreement, carbon prices fell. So the price that we placed on this all of a sudden was less than the value that society should place on it. Right? 
voluntary actions to offset carbons, companies that become carbon neutrals, only represents 0.3% of the greenhouse gas emissions of the richest 26 countries in the world, which means there's still a lot to do, right? And it should not just be climate that we're talking about. We also not need to talk about natural and social assets that address the other 16 um, sustainable development goals. Now, the good news is that we can start small. Did you know, for example, that Salzburg Group, my company, is a partner to a sustainable brand, and we provide this event even with renewable energy from a biomass project in Thailand, aptly named Blue Fire. You might say this is not a big impact. It's true, it's a small step. But did you know, for example, that these 81 global companies made a commitment to run their businesses on 100% renewable energy around the world. So this is a step up. Did you know that there are countries that have pledged to run the whole country on 100% renewable energy? And they're not just doing this for the climate. They also know they're doing it because it's good business. The thing about renewable energy, once you have the assets in place, your variable cost of production is zero, more or less, right? It means you become more competitive. And I think this is basically the change of the game that, that, that we can observe, right? It shows to me that the use of markets to manage environmental natural capital assets is a good idea. Of course, those markets need to be regulated well. But the good thing about this approach is it makes it very easy for everyone who wants to participate to come in, right? Okay. What I want to show you now, basically, is an idea for the future. Um, something that could be potentially very big. You might think that might be a bit far out and crazy, but you have all seen the Apple advertisement, you know, about the crazy ones. The crazy ones who believe that they can change the world, which are the ones who actually do change the world at the end, right? So here we go. What if we used the latest blockchain technology to create a coin, a tradable asset that is created only when a tree is planted or a solar panel is installed or a family has been pulled out of poverty and it, that is issued to the organization that has created this natural capital or social impact? This organization could then use such a coin to pay for the product and services it requires to operate such an investment or ex just exchange it for, for normal money, like a Thai baht or a US dollars, right? Which means we are using the positive impact that has been created by such an organization to co-fund the investment in natural capital. Now, maybe just for those of you who don't know what blockchain technology or cryptocurrency coins, such coins are. So, a blockchain is a public ledger, which is like a book that records the ownership of an asset, right? That records and transforms, confirms transactions of anything of value on the internet. It enables the internet of sharing and transacting value. Once a transaction is recorded, it cannot be altered. It makes it super easy to transfer value, to fund an investment, or to pay for things. That's right. Such a currency would reinvent money. We would create currencies that are backed by natural capital assets. It can only be printed, or what they call mined, that is a technical term in that community, if someone, in a verified way, creates a natural capital asset. So we, I'm happy to say that we are excited to test this idea, actually, in practice, involving, actually, players in Thailand, and we are very excited to see what we learn from that. So here are my key takeaways. It's a summary of my presentation, right? We need to align the value that we place on stuff. 
you know, like the big stuff, the social the assets, right? And you need to align this with the price of the stuff that we buy. The only way to do this is to put a price on natural and social capital assets. We already have very good metrics to quantify such assets. What we need is a willingness to price them. My second takeaway. We believe that carbon markets and carbon pricing have shown that this concept can actually work and can work at scale, but we still need something bigger. We believe that a very promising way to scale this into something really big is to back money with natural and social capital assets. You know that money used to be backed by gold. We used to call it the gold standard, right? Gold, a precious metal that is also associated with the greed of European explorers and exploitation, right? Backing money with natural and social capital would create a transformational boost for the restoration of our planet, quite the opposite of what a gold standard was. So no, looking into the future, now talking about brands, right? Brands that value our collective purpose will benefit. They put a price on natural capital assets. They include natural capital assets in their financial balance sheets. They could pay shareholder dividends in natural capital asset-backed currencies and accept them as a means of payment for the purchase of their goods and services. And by the way, blockchain at zero transaction cost and on a global basis. The increasing number of consumers will hold such currencies in their wallets and increase, actually, I should say, in their wallets in, you know, in terms of a mobile application, because this will all be on the internet, obviously, and increase their spending with brands that accept this currency as payment for products and services. This will then create a very strong alignment between a brand, a collective purpose, and shareholder value. And it's tied together by money. This would create a self-enforcing virtuous spiral and over time would crowd out other, let's call them purpose-free currencies, such as a US dollar. It might sound a little bit uncomfortable, and somewhat crazy. But as Al Gore said, we are the first generation that experiences the consequences of global warming, and we are also the last generation that can do anything to reverse it. So to achieve the required fundamental change, we need to do things fundamentally different to protect our shared purpose as a species on this planet Earth. Thank you.